Hello everybody and welcome to Guild Gab episode 80. This is a show all about Guild Wars 2 and today we will be discussing a lot of world versus world controversy drama on that or some, whatever you want to call it uh, going on about the uh, the poll. There was a poll that came out for World vs. World asking the players what they wanted Arena Net to work on next. So we'll talk about that as well as the Chaos Gloves, what we've been doing with the new update. Just kind of a little hodgepodge of things today. But first let me introduce my co-hosts Emma Moinks and Alex from the RPG Shack. What's up guys? How's it going? Hey. Much love How to Corvus. He is like, Poor he wanted so badly yeah. to be here today, yeah, but he's yeah. just like feeling like death today. He needs to rest up and all over the place. Yeah. Wow, well, okay. It's been one of those weeks. <laughs> it's been one of those weeks where like everybody's sick. And I'm yeah, I trying so not... hard not to get Pax Box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pax Box. <laughs> I wasn't feeling well earlier in the week, and then uh, yesterday I was out and about and uh, a lot of people in my building are now like all sick which means i'll get sick again mm. it's terrible it's just that season i guess right yeah. especially here uh, it's <clears throat> still cold here so like we had like one or two warmer days and then like instant freeze again so people get yes you know, <laughs> it has been so it's cold sick. here the last couple days like i had just like you know over the weekend, I'm like, I'm going to put away my heater. Like, you know, don't need it anymore. I have it on today because it is so cold. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But... Mm -hmm. what you gonna do? We've had snow. We've had snow in some snow parts. Snow again? Yeah. Jesus. What? Mm. What? <laughs> mm. <clears throat> this is how Ooh, exciting Guild Wars 2 is. We, talk, <clears throat> we started by talking about the weather. I yeah. kid. I kid. I'm one of those people. I'm I love one of those you, people Gilmore who talks Sue. about the weather all the time. <laughs> I think that annoys people. People hate talking about the weather. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> do you do it just just to just well, it's it's kind know. of like people in my family just talk about the weather. I don't know what it is. It's like <laughs> my mom or dad will call me and like, how's the weather? It's like that's the first question they ask. Not how are you doing? Or, <laughs> it's like how's what's going weather? on? Hundred percent chance how's of weather. weather. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That that weather is thing. I remember I, I I used I used to work in a department store years and years ago, and um, they were telling us how to, to talk to people, which is fairly easy. And they said, "Well, if you don't think of it, uh -huh. just talk about the weather." I was just like, "All right, you know, I'm going to talk to all little grannies all day about, you know, the cold, and then you find out really horrible things about rheumatoids and." Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, dearie me. Um, can, by the way, can, before we start, can, can I show you guys my shirt? Because some of you can see it already. Uh oh. This is a shirt. This is a shirt that my um, that my colleagues got me for my birthday. <laughs> my hair is a bird. Your argument is invalid. Yeah, we've got a bit of a thing Nicholas about Nicolas Cage? Cage in the office. Yeah, it's Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> feel like really a bit of Nick Cage at mm. Nice. <laughs> nice. Is that the is that the shirt that you took on and off for the world record? Uh, no, we, we 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 had to use official Green McMillan t shirts. Um, although official. when, yeah, um, although every, every every time I started doing it, someone kept grabbing my t shirts. I kept exposing myself to like a room full of a room full of like two hundred people. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine when you're putting on and taking shirts off, it's just going to happen naturally, no matter what you do. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, it's, it's the first time I've taken the shirts off that many ladies without being arrested, so it's. Uh, <laughs> it was a good day. <laughs> right then. So, Guild Wars 2. Yeah, Guild Wars we had 2. a huge update a couple weeks ago. Uh, I mean, has it changed the way you guys play the game, or have you been doing anything new because oh, of the updates? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, it plays, changes the way you play Ranger, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Oh, the sword. The sword. <laughs> it's so good. It's I do like, not. I, I still don't use the sword. Oh, it's so good. You can actually use it. You can use it in the uncategorized fractal now and not just kind of leap off the side. It's just just for that. It's brilliant. <laughs> I, lo I, I love it so much. Um, but that that's, that, that's <clears throat> kind of the thing kind of the thing that I'm I'm doing my fractals again. I'm you know, I'm in dungeons with the guys 
um, I'm doing me da- I'm doing me dailies again, um, <laughs> and it's just I mean there's there's so much that I want to talk about that because that we didn't that I didn't really talk about last week because I hadn't really had time to play the patch the last right. time we all got together, but it's yeah I'm I'm loving it that it it sounds kind of mercenary that I'm going I'm loving it now that I get more stuff for playing the game, but. It sure. it honestly has made all the difference and and giving people, like we said, you've got giving people the incentive to actually want to play the content. It's it's just great. It's there, there's so many fantastic little updates like the um, uh, the uh, the the caches in your home instance <clears throat> for um for the for the heart of thorns areas. No no noxious pods though. Not quite sure about that, but I guess that's because it dropped they. Drop at least one crystalline ore, so that had um, that had kind of unbalanced that, I think. But no, it's it's fantastic. I I love it, and the, oh, the the new fractal daily system as well. Just kind of you can, if 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 there's a fractal that's that's there, so like 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 I was just saying, the uncategorized fractal, and you do the the, the tier form like the level seventy or eighty one. You get all four rewards just for doing that one fractal. So you get tier one, two, three, and four, and it's not, you know, a huge a huge amount, but it's it's pretty great. And um, the uh, yeah, just stuff. Oh, and Aetherpath drops bloom skins now as well. Hundred percent. Which is yeah, which is why they're um, abs- absolutely percent. Yeah. <laughs> they're absolutely worthless on the trading post right now. <laughs> well, a couple a couple of them <laughs> a couple of them yeah. are fourteen to twenty gold, but there's there's quite a few that are worth almost nothing now, which is a bit of a shame. I think a hundred percent was too much. Definitely mm. like it needed an up drop rate to make it feel more rewarding, but you've upped mm. it to the point of making them sort of pointless now. Uh which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but still a good change. Uh, I think it needed to be upped. And going back and changing it now to being less than 100% doesn't really matter because there's so many of them out there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. But so perhaps a small misstep with there. But uh, yeah, dungeons feel more rewarding to do again. There, there's, there are you know more people doing them. Although LFG mm. isn't necessarily overpopulated, so take that as as you will, I suppose. But mm-hmm. for those who used to run dungeons and are now running it again, you know, they seem to be pretty happy with, with those changes. Yeah. I love it. It's happy. We're so happy. We're actually happy. We're content. actually happy. It's content. It's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Cause there's, there's, there's some guys that I play with. Um, and, uh, whenever I talk facts, uh, facts and, and numbers about particular classes. They're the guys that I nick all these ideas from. Um, but they're actually they're actually playing the game again now, and it's just great that we can all just dive in and and do do eight dungeons. And it's it's I think it's it's something like sixty five seventy silver per path, all told, before you start looking into. Um, uh, your tokens and your five gold at the end, so it's it's not quite the uh, the the gold per path that it was before, but it's yeah, it's re- actually quite good, and I'm really enjoying it. There's there's enough to do, or there's enough different things to do now, where in a day I don't get done everything that I want to get done in the game, and that's a good thing. It, it's a bad oh, absolutely. Thing. It's a bad thing to say. Okay, I'm going to sit down for two hours. I'm done. I have nothing to do. I'm just going to sit here in AFK for however long, right? Now it's the the Mm -hmm. very much the opposite is true, at least for me. You know, I have dailies that I want to do. I PvP a little bit every day. uh, And then I usually do fractals, which means I then have to decide, do I even have time for dungeons? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Mm -hmm. And then do I have time to get in to do World vs. World, which can be a very serious time commitment. Now, the first week... The first weekend, I guess, that World vs. World came out, I probably spent 15 to 20 hours in there just because I hadn't been there for so long and, you know, lots of people were doing it again. It was very exciting. This week, I haven't had any time yet, so hopefully this weekend I'll I'll have some more time to get back in there. But, um, 
Yeah, I mean, the patch is just... And then spending a lot of time in Heart of Thorns maps, uh, which I think mm -hmm. need maybe a little bit of adjustments, but are in a much better place than they used to be. Yeah. I did. I a... mean, did... Go ahead. I was going to say, do you think they need adjusting back down a little bit? In terms um, of the uh, token rules? So, like, Vernon Brink feels super, super rewarding. Perhaps maybe even overly... Yeah overly rewarding people people don't want me to say that um but then when you compare it to arc basin and tangled depths um you get a little bit you, you get less currency than you do in vernon brink and i wish that was a little more equalized like bring the other two up a little bit and then dragon stand there are pods everywhere which is fantastic Just, yeah. But you don't really get many machetes for actually doing dragon stand i, I did a dragon stand uh, last night we did it super quick as well because we got a really nice bomb placement on his uh, on the mouth of Mordremoth. But uh, I think maybe I got I don't know ten less than fifteen machetes. And after I had bought a bunch of machetes, I opened over like four, I opened like almost forty pods, which is awesome mm. and crazy. That's but, fully crystalline ore right there. That's uh, that's an armor piece. Yeah, at least more than that, at least. Uh, 35 to 40 pods is what I opened in that one run, which is fantastic, but I don't have or I don't get nearly enough machetes. And maybe that's okay to a certain extent, because you do want people to kind of buy a machete, spend the currencies of the other maps. Uh, right. There's a balance there for sure. I think it's off by just a little bit. It, it, yeah. feels, like a, it, it feels like I have to buy a, a few too many machetes. I, don't, I think yeah. that you should buy some or have to buy some but it feels mm. like it's off just a tiny bit compared to like yeah. other maps. I, I, I do kind of know what you mean because um, I've, I've, I've certainly noticed in Tangled Depths I'm getting significantly fewer Leyline Crystals than um, Aurelium or Airship Parts. But then again, I don't really do that many of the pre-meta events in Tangled Depths because the map frustrates me because I die in there all the time. And that's sort um, of a problem. And that's sort of a yeah. problem. Um, Tangled uh, Depths. Leyline Sparks, though. Leyline Sparks are all over the place. So Tangled Depths, one of the issues is that people show up for the, the Chalk, the Garant, right? And they do that event, and that's very popular. It's very easy to find a good group for and be successful, etc. And that's fantastic. It's a little more difficult now to find people or groups who are doing the pre-meta events, at least in my experience. It's been a little more yeah. troublesome, at least on, on Tangled Depths. Um, it's been a little more troublesome to find people doing the pre-events. Now, Vernon Brink is fine. That thing runs like clockwork. It's fantastic. Tons of rewards everywhere. Arc Basin, probably not one of my favorite meta events there, but that seems to be running fairly well. Tangled Depths, the pre-meta events seem to be a bit sparse on who's doing them or who's not doing yeah. them. Yeah, I mean, to, to me, it's it's. Uh, Talisi says you need to navigate the map. I don't necessarily think it's the navigation. I think it's it's the number of enemies that are in a relatively small space. Because um, the if if especially if you don't have the uh, the the Chak acid mastery, like that is really really punishing. Um, it's, I mean, on top of that, it's a very complicated map. I think it's a very well put together map, but it's very complicated when you, tr if you're trying to do your currency farm or something. Um, and yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree. I, I do think it might need a little bit of tweaking and maybe actually Auric Basin as well. Cause, um, the, I, I just find exalted keys everywhere. Just every I take a step. Have five exalted keys. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, it it's I I I am perfectly happy with that because you can you can do the little map hop thing at the end of a successful tour and uh, run around and open a whole bunch of other chests. By the way, don't open anything but the grand chests. Don't open. Mm. I'm a sucker. I open everything. I mean, you, get, do too. you get so many Man. keys. You get so many yeah. keys that it's just like, I'll open everything. Screw it. I don't even care. No, don't do it. You should, it's you're right. so not worth it. You're right. It isn't. Like, but... <laughs> you, 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 you might get like um, some auric dust or the occasional sliver from them. But with a grand chest, you're guaranteed an exotic bag and 
dust and a sliver at least. And I I did a little bit of um, experiment stuff, and uh, I opened a great one, and it was two blues and a green. I was like, well, this is this is ridiculous. I actually I actually worked pretty hard to get these to get these keys. So no. Mm. No, but that's it's weird because Orc Basin's the 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 only one where you have um where you have tiered um chests, isn't it? Because Ver- Verdant Brink, Tangled Depths, and Dragon Stand, they just got airship cargo, the crystallized well, cash, and the just pod. There's two different types of airship cargo, but yeah, there's like a large one Is and that... a regular. One. Yeah, really. Yeah, there's large yeah, airship cargoes. That. Mm-hmm. Are, are they identified as large ones or? Yes. They're lo- they're larger looking and they're also called large I airship. I have cargos. never seen one of those. So. Noxious pods are noxious pods. They're all the same, and the yeah. the crystallized caches yeah, are all the same. Yeah. But uh, yet, yeah, uh, Verdi Brink has uh, has large and regular, or whatever. And then yeah, of course you know the other one has three different classifications. Yeah. Just makes me want more for a key ring of some kind, like. Bog and I, know, I took right? our revenants. Uh, we got our revenants to eighty finally, and we took them into Verdant Brink Woo! to get hero points. Woo! Harold, here we come. And Harold is so much. We were, you know, running around, and, and these characters didn't have any heart of thorn. You know, no crowbars. We had no crowbars, so we're just like, oh, it's so painful to keep passing these these boxes and just right. not being able to open them. And. Um, <laughs> You know, we, we'd be on the map for long enough and, you know, the little meta event would pop. Yay, your map participation. You you know, yay, we have three crowbars. You'd use them and then, you know, you don't have them again. And I'm like, I have like 50 crowbars sitting on other characters, you know. Um, and you get well, so many crowbars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we were talking <laughs> but... about, we had a good discussion about um, some people were saying that the, the crowbars, the exalted keys, all that should go into the wallet. And then there was people saying that the wallet, those aren't exactly currency. They're keys. No. They're the same as like Zephyrite keys, you know, uh, bandit keys for the silver wastes. Um, and then people talk about wanting a key ring that would be that would combine all of that into one inventory slot. And then mm-hmm. you could put that into a shared inventory slot and just have it mm-hmm. no matter what character you're you on. Could. You, you could. You could. Alternatively... Alternatively, what you could do is you could get each one of your keys and put them into a shared inventory slot. Sure. And that way, ArenaNet Arena have... continues to take our money. <laughs> if you have 16 so... shared inventory slots. <laughs> this is, why, this is why that shared banker is so, so important. Because if yeah. you can put all the keys in your bank, mm-hmm. then you can constantly, like, okay, I'm on this map, I'll access my bank, get my keys out, whatever the case is. Um, but it's so damn expensive, right, to get your hands on one of those unlimited bankers. I, I wish I had one. It, it's probably right. one of the most useful items you can put in that shared inventory slot, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Problems. Mm. First for, but problems. for the gold that it costs you to buy one of those, you could just buy five more shared inventory <laughs> slots and just throw them all in there. <laughs> Easily, easily. I suppose. I suppose. I suppose. But yeah, for sure. If they, I just say if they if they sold a key ring on the gem store, I'd buy it in a second. Oh, people would rage. Are you kidding me? Oh, that, rage? That, that, that can't Pay be in the gem win. store. That. that can't be in the gem store. That it's but it's not be to win. win. It's for convenience. Everything is to win. No, <laughs> everything. Is to win. <laughs> My key ring is bigger than yours. I win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the like. I know that Mike O'Brien. I know that Mo said a while ago that they weren't looking at or working on a key ring, but who knows? It seems it seems like the company's focus is shifting a little bit, at least for World vs. World and structured PvP. On, um, you know they they've said before they want to be more like stewards of the game mode, at least for those two game modes. Uh, PVE, I'm not so sure. But, um, so who knows? Like, a key ring could still maybe happen if the players really want it, if they constructively provide feedback to Rin to say, look, this is a continuing problem. I'm really tired, and I don't want to buy a shared inventory slot just so everybody can access my crowbars. Right. Seems a little bit unfair, you know? Um, mm-hmm. 
On the other hand, they gave you a free inventory slot, so you can put at least one in there, I guess. But there's so many keys now. You got keys for Dry Top, you have keys for Silver Waste, all the three new hot maps. Uh, I'm just, I'm carrying around so many different keys that it's kind of, and I try, I really try to actively go out of my way to use up all the keys in a particular map. So I don't have to have yeah. them anymore, you know? Right. Um, well, for well, the newer maps, about... a bit of a problem because mm -hmm. you, I still need a lot of those rewards and stuff. And so I kind of want those keys. But if you do Verdant mm -hmm. Brink, it gives you so many crowbars. I don't know how people yeah, run out. It's... I, I, no, I, I, I've, got, I've got 150 sitting in one of my slots. <laughs> I just run around and I'm, I'm, I'm actually starting to do some of the achievement hunting now. Yeah. Um, because I'm I'm sort of starting to run out of mastery points, <laughs> and I, I think, don't have oh, enough. Yeah. Like, mastery like points. Vernon Brink is probably the most rewarding currency wise for for all of them. And while I still need a lot of that stuff, I know that there's some players starting to hit that cap of I own the tonic and I have the minis and I have all the recipes and I, I just have everything from this map. I don't really need much currency anymore. So, I mean, I, there's other things. I, I guess you could spend the currency, like, on the bags and stuff, but... Um, yeah, no. Absolutely. But if, 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 you, if you've got the Laymaster converter, though, you can actually convert map currency into the ones that you actually need. Mm -hmm. So if you're... I mean, I mean if, you, if, if it's not a one-for-one -one ratio, I think you have to spend... You have to spend 25 of one to get 10 of another. Correct. So it's... Yeah. Um, so... If you wanted to, you could just farm one map and um, build up a particular currency, and then once a day you can just go, oh, actually, I fancy a little bit of this. Um, it's nice that they let you do that. Yeah. It is, it is at a loss. And one, and, yeah, and but the, time gated, but... but the, yeah, but the thing is, if, if it was one for one, everyone would just be doing it for... Um, right. Not... not can't be like, one for one. When, yeah, when Chris it's, Lenore it's, comes up or doing it for whatever, it's... Right, like right now it's 25 to 10, which mm -hmm. isn't too bad, but it's only once a day that you can do that, right? Um, or once a day per slot, so you could probably per do it slot, twice yeah. a day. Right. But, like, doing it twice a day, so I trade 50 for 20, which I don't necessarily hate that conversion. It's the fact that I can only do it, like, once or twice a day that's the bigger problem, Right. So, I don't know. If there was an easier way to, like, balance them with some kind of conversion, obviously, but if there was some way to balance them, that might make it a little I, bit better. But... I, I mean, I, I, I think... I, I think... I mean, obviously, it, it is a bit annoying, but I think it is a, a, a good idea that they've done it like that, because otherwise, like we've all been saying, we get tons and tons of crowbars. We could just farm the hell out of Verdant Brink and then just yep. end up drowning in Leyline Crystals. Yeah. So... It it is it is kind of annoying, but I th I think it's there for a very for a very good reason. Because mm -hmm. if we didn't have to do Tangled Depths or Auric Basin, there wouldn't be people in them. And right. they're, good, they're they're good maps when push comes to shove. They're good maps and they're engaging events. One of the other things I noticed too, and maybe I'm just missing them, but in Vernon Brink there are veterans you can kill that are events. And uh, they will reward you with 25 airship parts plus some other loot. And that can add up to like 35 or 45 airship parts just for killing just one for guy. Yeah, Joel, I, don't I, really the other day. I don't really see that in the other two maps. Maybe I'm just missing them or maybe I just haven't run across them. But that's like that's one of the reasons. If you can go around and kill three or four of those veterans, like your parts just add up super quick. I yeah, did absolutely. a... I did a partial day and a full night cycle yesterday in Verdant Brink, and I started with like a hundred airship parts. I ended with like twelve hundred airship parts. Jeez. It was just like, yeah, yeah it, it, it's crackers. You can, you can get easily a thousand parts of run with, without wow. chewing, putting too much effort into it. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I I actually found um, I actually found the same in the Silver Wastes as well because I've I started doing the the short bow collection which. I think we should talk about because it it's so cool. Mm. But um, but yeah, I, I was in there for fifteen minutes, six hundred crests, no problem. And somebody else, so Chad is telling us or telling me that that these do exist in A, B, and T, D. 
I mean, they must be, I don't know, maybe I'm just not lucky and don't find them. They're harder yeah. to find or movement around mm-hmm. tedious. I don't know, maybe a little more tedious and maybe that's why I don't find them. But yeah. uh, it's crazy. I mean, if the, you can do yeah. those, you rack up that currency okay. quick. Yeah. There's a few farmable hero points in um, Auric Basin as well. So um, there's there's a really good Stonehead one uh, near the North Waypoint, I think it is, where if there's a group of you once a day, you can do that. Um, and you get a um, you get a little chest, and uh, you get a ton of aurelium as well. Um, I get six hundred crests by being very sensible about the events that I do. Um, in the old in Core Guild Wars two, all you have to do you have to tag a mob, get experience from it, and when that event ends, you'll get the reward for it. Um, a really good thing to do is to chain your pack to escort supply runs together. Um, do a little bit of the defend events um, absolutely target every time you see the clear the rampaging mortar events do those because that is just killing a veteran or um, giving a couple of bits of rubble to the NPC when those events come up and it just racks up so much and uh, don't AFK when it's not your lane doing Vinerath either, either because you actually get three separate re- rewards for each time a lane completes it. So you get yours, you get the second, and you get the third, provided that you take part in the defense kind of section um, for that as well. And the final, the, the uh, I think the the last time I was in there, the final reward was like 75 75 crests. And of course, if you stay in there as well, you actually um, to, to do the next cycle. You actually get a little buff which gives you an extra 50% to magic find and uh, you start getting those little bags that give you extra bandit crests as well so it's very easy over the course of, of a couple of uh, silver waste rotations to, to to build up your crests it's it's easy money man easy money it's interesting oh, and because of course, buy your um, uh, organ extracts as well by, by the organ extractors, even if you've done the entire mm-hmm. collection, because mm-hmm. occasionally, because occasionally, occasionally you'll get a rare one, and um, that's an extra fifty. That's why. Crests. I, that's oh, another yeah, reason and... I have a silver waste dedicated character. That's all she does because she has all the organs, and so whenever she comes across a crypto botanist, you know, he, he can say, "I want kidneys," and I can say, "I got two kidneys," you know, rather than be, them being spread out over you. a bunch of characters. So you know, and of course with the bandit keys and and the I don't even remember what they're called, nightmare keys or something. Like they just like yeah. there's so much current, so yeah, many, yeah. so many things that don't go into the wallet that come out of silver waste that like, I'm just I have one character that's all she does. Yeah, it's interesting. I th- I think sil- silver waste is pretty to me. It's still definitely the best way to make constant money. Oh, it's still the funnest even map in I... my eyes. I love silver waste. I haven't done it in so long. Like, I, it's funny because right now I'm doing it because I need to get to a thousand for the legendary I'm trying like, to work on. Yeah. Uh, I'm up to like seven hundred something, so I'm close. But um, yeah. I haven't done silver waste in so long that uh, I just hop in at a vine wrath and do the last ending parts, which isn't as rewarding, obviously, than sitting there and doing the whole map. But mm. there you go. <laughs> mm. Speaking yeah, it's, of which, um, <laughs> can we talk? Can we talk about it? Can we talk it's about the freaking, collection? Them freaking legendaries! Oh my god, so terrible! Would you like to talk about your shlongbow, Alex? Tell I'd us love about, to talk tell about, us about your your shlongbow journey. Well, um, my shl- I think it's better if I show you my shlong. No. <laughs> PG thirteen. Um, <laughs> um, aside from tier two, the first half of tier two. It's great. Like running a oh, <laughs> um, it's 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 Schlongbo <laughs> Farm. The Come Shlongbo on down to Schlongbo Farm. Farm. Uh... Yeah. The thing is, I, I don't even have a character where I'll actually use the Schlongbo Ranger. Like, I don't, I don't use short bow on Ranger. Um, although I, I, need to, I need to. <laughs> <laughs> bow bow, dude. Any, bear, anyway, any... it's bear bow. <laughs> bear, bear bow is the way to play. <laughs> listen, somebody bear... did. It's listen, <laughs> totally derailing. Somebody took like twenty-five Ranger builds, bear bow being one of them, 
And guess what? It's just as terrible as I've been telling people for <laughs> years. Of course it's uh, terrible. Of course it's terrible. There are so many better pets with Heart of Thorns <laughs> that you can use in place of your stupid bear. <laughs> mm. Anyway, go ahead, Longbow. Yeah, yeah. To, to be to be fair, I, I I I do kind of want to learn Thief and use it on there, but. The just kind of what 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 wandering around and kind of getting little bits and pieces of the collection, building up this little story, and chasing the tigers around the maps. I I've almost, I just kind of found it really fun because it's been a while since I've done any world completion or gone out and gone out and seen any of the core maps, and just bobbing along to a to to, to little bits and pieces, and it was kind of like it was kind of bringing back memories. There's you know, the, you know, you know, there's that particular vista in uh, Sparkfly Fen where you have to go through the vampire bat cave and then up around the other side and and get to it where you first. It's where you f- kill Chuka, I think. It's where you first kill one of the tigers. Oh, wow. Spoilers, jeez. <laughs> the... <laughs> really? <laughs> you start the collection and it's kill the legendary tigers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my like, god! To read, guys. <laughs> but um, but I, I remember when when I back in 2012 when I was doing map completion for the first time and I I was trying to get that vista. It took me hours to figure it out, mm. and I was like running around trying to find underwater tunnels, running through caves, and not quite getting there. And running around to all of these older places, it just brought some of these really nice kind of memories back for me, saying, oh, I remember this, and 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 what have you, and and eventually killing the uh, the uh, tigers was kind of like, alright, now we've done it. And then it was a little bit annoying that not only after you'd killed the legendary tigers, that doesn't actually give you the tiger achievement in the uh, in the collection. You actually then have to go into Verdant Brink and farm like Tiger juice or tiger <laughs> extract. Tiger juice. <laughs> tiger juice. It sounds it like ti- something. Uh, um, yeah. Tiger juice. Uh, tiger, tiger juice. Tiger juice. Just feed it through a wood chipper, and there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Get in there, tiger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're tiger terrible people. Kind of boing out. Oh boing. my goodness. Boing. <laughs> boing. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um. But like the, the the actual story aspect of it, I think is 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 really cool. And we we we, we talked about this just before the patch dropped, and uh, we were kind of worried that the collection might not be what people wanted. But then Ink said, "What if people really enjoy it and they get annoyed because it's the last one we'll have?" And they have been. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Except <laughs> the. Except tier two cost me like six hundred gold or something. Ooh. For probably at least uh, you should talk about that. Shot. Jeez, like you, you have to um, what is it? You, you have to like make a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you, you you need like grandmaster huntsman for it as well. You have to make like a whole bunch of stuff, but then along the way you have to make what's like four or five hundred elder shortbow staves, and not even all at the same time. It's just kind of like, oh, uh, so it just eat it like my bag's really, completely. Empty. Oh. It, it really sucks. So you do okay. So you start in in any legendary collection. You start out in tier one, and you do depending on the legendary and your how you like it or not. But you do a bunch of fun world hunting stuff, uh, kill mm. bosses, and use this jar, and then take the jar somewhere else to release the spirit or whatever. Uh, get items from bosses and burn it in a in the one of the maps. Uh, kill tigers, go find tiger dens, etc., etc., etc. You or go find star charts and take a rubbing and all kinds of stuff that sounds pretty fun and, and generally is. It's sort of like this big world scavenger hunt on some level, mm. and that's great. So you complete collection one, however many steps it is, and then you get a box. And in that box is a recipe to craft stage one of whatever you're working on. The, the first stage of the precursor. Right. So before yeah. you can get to stage two, you have to craft this item. So for the axe, it's called the device. And each one has a different 
name depending on what it is. And that has a special skin, so you will unlock a skin for your wardrobe. Part of the problem is that this uh, original item is you have to... Use for, so for the axe, you have to craft the axe blade, and then the axe haft, and then a legendary inscription. Inscription. And this is where we run into the first time gate. So you've been doing this process at your own pace uh, in a day, in a couple of hours, like over a couple of days, depending on how much game time you have to devote to it. But now you hit a brick wall of needing five Delgram or still ingots, or three, or however many it is, and the legendary inscription needs ten Elonian leather. So unless you have the gold to buy it off the trading post and skip that, or maybe you have multiple accounts to make more than one, you're sitting there for ten days waiting to progress to tier two. And that's just the beginning yeah. of the craftathon you're about to go on. Because from there on, <laughs> you in stage two, which I'm only halfway through for the axe, it's you have painful. You have lots more crafting to do. You have to make 250 basic Mithraxes just so they'll teach you how to craft something else. And then that has like five Delgamore steel ingots. So then you got to wait five more days and then craft something else and then f wait five more days because you need more. It's just time gate, time gate, time gate, yeah. time gate until you can fit and lots of gold and lots of money. And I understand. It's so expensive. I understand that that gold gate is needed. I understand that that sink is needed. I get it. I really do. But you, the pacing and the flow of that whole journey feels disconnected and messed up. You're doing this really fun search and rescue thing, the scavenger hunt around the world, and then you take a 20 to 30 day or more break on doing anything fun because you have a gold sink and need to craft. And hey, if you've got lots of gold, this might not feel too painful to you. You can skip over it, and it, it it's fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get to part three, and happy days. We're back on the scavenger hunt, and we're doing fun things. And we're finding tiger dens. Uh, we're getting a little tiger that attaches itself to the back, or if you're doing the longbow, you, you get a secret garden that you can now till every day, and... There's some really fun, cool things that have to do with this scavenger hunt. But Tier mm. 2, and I'm not a Tier 4, so I don't know yet, but at least Tier 2 and having to craft that thing that requires so much materials, it's just this time gate. It's, yeah, it's, it's not it's, fun. No. And the thing is, what's, what's weird is that the, the, the other half of Tier 2, where you have to talk to Skull and Mossy about stuff, where you have to go and collect stabilizing matrices and the bandit crests and oh god she wants a whole ton of other crap as well like that's that's fine like 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 you're saying you, you're up to 700 bandit crests you only want a thousand it's not it's not a huge amount that kind of thing's doable and considering you get three or four stabilizing matrices for, a, for every fractal path you do anyway well, there's not a li like it, fine. there's also not a limit on crests, right? If you have the time, you can run silver waste as much as you want and keep consuming crests or keep gaining crests. And so that's kind of do at your own pace, depending on how much free time you have to do. That's great. But with these daily lockouts of ascended materials, like I said, unless you want to bypass it with gold, which is perfectly viable, I guess you could run dungeons or fractals or whatever it is you do to make gold and then bypass your way through it, literally buy your way through it. If you don't do that, then you're just sitting there waiting. Uh, or if you're trying to be maybe frugal about it, or if you're trying to maybe not overspend on it, then you're just sitting there waiting to have more fun with this legendary journey. And I understand it's legendary, but I think it would maybe, and maybe this is wrong, maybe this is not correct, but... I feel like if you put that stuff towards the end of things, of the end of the crafting, then at least you're you're having fun, you're having fun, you're having fun. I'm done with everything. I just have to craft this now, which is going to be this block of mess, and then I can make mm. my legendary weapon. Which yeah. still, that whole process seems messed up, but anyway. Yeah. What, 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 I, what I found kind of really unsettling was that to uh, I've 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 got the tier two bow now. I'm on to, I'm on to tier three. Is that to create the tier two bow, you have to salvage the tier one bow. Like I, the because there's there's this thing called the essence of the hunt, 
when you make the first thing. And you have to use this essence to... I, I assume you have to make it for Tigris and um, whatever the Tier 4 one's called. Um, that you, you, you have to salvage the, 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 the weapon that you've already got to, to get this thing. Now, that's really unsettling for me. It's like, it's just an exotic. Come on. Don't... Right. It, but even it, if it, it, even if it wasn't an exotic, let's say it's an ascended that you make, you still have yeah. to salvage it and lose that mm. ascended so that you can make the next step. The back piece works the same way, unfortunately. Going through that process, you need to salvage that back piece as you go along in order to make the next one. So even when you mm. get to the ascended tier and it feels like, okay, I spent six hundred gold or I spent X hundred gold, I have, but I have this cool ascended. It doesn't matter because you don't get to keep it. You have mm. to salvage it and throw it away to move on to the next step. So you might get to use it for a little while because of the time gate. So I guess that's sort of mm. there. But, yeah, uh, I don't know. It feels, the pacing of it feels, like I, it, when you first originally look at it, it's like, okay, I have fun, then I craft, then I have fun, then I craft, then I legendary. That pacing sounds on paper, it sounds kind of good. But when you're doing it in game, it's like, I had a bunch of fun. Now I'm poor oh. and I'm just waiting for time gates, and in a month from now I can have fun again. And that yeah. just doesn't feel really fun. It feels a lot of unfun. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't know about every legendary, but I did Rodgort step one last night as well. And Rodgort's uh, first step, that, that first weapon you have to make, the first torch, isn't too bad. You need, like, two Spiritwood planks... And two Delgin War Steel ingots, so you're only waiting two days. Uh, bearable, I can deal with that. But then to make the legendary inscription, I need ten Alonian leather, so I'm still waiting ten days. Uh, it sucks. It sucks. What 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 about you, Peachy? Are you on are you on a legendary journey at the moment, or are you I'm doing your collections? Or considering anything like that? going for at least part of the bow, because at what point mm. do you get? Because you get all the other stuff. You get the Tysaw Age has the little tiger on its back, and it has little animations. It grabs on, it looks I around. I was like, oh, I think I need that. I you think know, you get it, that at tier three. Tier three. I think you get that at tier three. You know, and you get yeah. minis and stuff. So I don't know. I don't know if I yeah. want to spend six hundred gold and all that time get on. A I know, but I like, <laughs> but yeah, there's. There's, I'm still a little disappointed that you know there's no new legendaries because I was I was waiting for a tier two one that I really wanted to go after, and yeah. they're of the four they released I'm not really interested in, in in the final product of any of them like none of them blew me away, um, so that's a little disappointing because I do I haven't done any legendary collection but I want to I want to go after a legendary I want to do the collection the precursor collection and go through that journey but there's not one that I feel like I would be satisfied at the end that I got so mm. I don't know I, I like a... go ahead what's really fun is there's a couple of them like you're saying peachy where at tier three you get this tiger on your back I don't really like the short bow has really cool animations but like Alex I don't really necessarily need the short bow Mm -hmm. I just want the tiger on my back. Mm -hmm. So like, but if it's going to cost will... you like seven, eight hundred gold and all this time just to get the backpack, is that worth it? Or would you rather I be know. going after another? Would you rather be going after the fractal backpack or the PVP backpack? You know, even though it's the long bow technically not a backpack, you... it's like you you can have a back piece and the tiger on right. your back. And then Kudzu has like a little garden that you can go till every day. And like I want that too because really? it's like a permanent thing. Yeah, it's like a permanent thing for your account. That's so cool. Those things are just no cool. That yeah, those things are thing. just cool. Is that a new yeah. thing with the See, collection? that's what I said. I think we said yes. that last week and I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. No. No. In uh, in Mount Maelstrom, the the jumping puzzle in Mount Maelstrom where you have to kill the... the oh, yeah, I the remember. Way. Yeah, we talked about this last week. Right, yeah. yeah, there's a garden in that... there that you advance like as you work on kudzu. And I, I don't necessarily want kudzu, but I totally want that garden just so I can have it. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. It's just like, it's an account unlock thing, and I feel like it enriches my account, and I, so I want it for that reason. I want a tiger on my back in addition to my back piece just because... <laughs> what the hell? A tiger on my back. It's a little cub <laughs> on my back. <laughs> What can I say? You know, I, I love those sorts of little things. And I think it's fantastic. 
And it, it kind of just makes the whole no new legendaries for a while all the more painful because mm. to me that is it's such a full cool addition. Yeah. But hey, um if 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 what they've got planned is is worth stopping legendary development, I think it'll be worth it, provided that what they've got planned is actually what people want and what people enjoy. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But but mm. chaos gloves. <laughs> but we got chaos, chaos gloves. gloves. Yes, jo- I, I th- and they're we, we diable. Talking... Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we we were talking about this in in Discord the other day. I'm so sure there were a hall of monuments reward, and then you guys were like, "Nope, <laughs> no, nope, just an idiot." <laughs> <laughs> they're real. I it's bought the them instantly. Bubble, I mean, chaos yeah, gloves. I cool. don't. I honestly can't remember if I had them in Guild Wars One. I know I, I saw everybody and their mom with them, and I know that they were really hard to get, or really, or just really expensive. I don't remember if I actually had them. Hmm. Were Chaos Gloves a request of mine? No. No, that wasn't something. I, I know there's a lot of people who... What was cool about it is seeing people who their main in Guild Wars 1... Like, so many people had the Chaos Gloves. And so they tried to recreate their main in Guild Wars 2, and there's nothing that even comes close, that even came close to the the Chaos Gloves. Um, So that was a really cool addition. I guess kind of the... uh, Radiant, radiant. sort of, a little bit. That that was the closest you could get is the Radiant, but... Yeah. And they look so cool. I put them on my Druid last night, who's all in green, and she's got the Super Adventure Box green staff, and then she's got these glowing green hands. It looks so cool. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I need to thank Elixir for for sending me a pair. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think they're cool. I love that they're dyeable. The dye, because it's always like a white light from behind it, so like the dyes are sort of a little bit limited. Like all greens kind of oh. look the same, sort of, right? And all yellows kind of, mm-hmm. you know, within reason, of course. Uh, but still diable which radiant gloves are not obviously right so right. that's super cool and there's like i don't know if you notice peachy but when you hold your weapon there's a bleed over effect onto the weapon really with a glow sort of yeah the glow from your hand sort of inches out a little bit onto the weapon oh, that's oh cool. wow i didn't notice that yeah yes yeah, just really cool um and this coincides of course with like the original guild wars uh launch right so Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty interesting. Eleven years this year, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Last year was yeah. the ten year anniversary. I am all for them bringing back those skin. Bring back every single skin in Guild Wars One. I'm kind of surprised that we got the. Remember when we got the monk outfit that was a monk armor in yeah. in Guild Wars One? We never got any other armor sets or outfits or anything. Outfits. From, I don't know why they just no, did the didn't. monk and then they didn't do any others. I was expecting a oh, warrior we got, and a we ranger. Got, we got Gwen's outfit, didn't we? We did get Gwen's outfit. Um, now, I mean, actually, some of them. There was there's the um, primeval. I think there's the. I mean, the, the game launched with some Guild Wars one skins for like the heroic primeval, edition. I think you get to. Quite so. Yeah, primeval. Yeah. I think is the is the medium. It's a ra- it was a ranger Guild Wars one outfit. It's got oh, all, no, like the, the bones the, and stuff. It's like the pants. Uh, that's. That's the Crichton set. Crichton. The primeval. Primeval is heavy. Primeval is I the think. heavy set, yeah. Okay. And then there's the, and then there's the light one. Which... The light one. I don't remember what the light one is. Out. It's got. It's I'm like terrible with names. Points, <laughs> yeah. And it just out of all the light armor skins they could have chosen, they chose that one. It's. <laughs> but they're cheap. They're cheap. <sighs> They're only like 500 gems for the whole, and it's an armor set for the whole mm-hmm. armor set. Mm-hmm. set. Profane. Profane. Thank you, That's what it is, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and the like, chaos. Like, chaos for example, from 500 there's gems. pieces of profane I really like, but I would never wear the whole profane. If it was an outfit, forget it, right? <laughs> because there's pieces. There's pieces of profane that I actually really like. Hmm. Not the shoulder pieces. Not the shoulder pads. No, and I'm not a big mask fan. I don't, you know, the whole... I don't know. I hate masks. Not a big, Helmets, not a big fan anything of Anything that hides my face. I love, like, the crowns and, like, I wear the laurels on most of my female yeah. characters. Like, I like any... I don't want to well, hide my hair and my face. Did, 
Do, do you not use the um? What works really well on Silvari is the is the uh, the necromancer's masks, not the the glowing not, eyes. Not, not the demon. Yeah, not the not um not the demon one because that covers up too much of your face. But the um, it's like the ghoul one. It's like the green and white one that just gives your necro a, like a really creepy look. Mm. I kind of like those th- those kind of things, and a couple of the mesmer ones are okay as well, but they're more like proper masks. Yeah, mm. yeah. I was never mm. a fan of those, but that was big oh, in yeah. in Guild Wars One. Uh, the masks for the mesmer. Like, that was, yeah, like, yeah, all of their headpieces were masks like that. Mm. Ah, nostalgia. They were, like, really camp magicians in Guild Wars 1, <laughs> didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> i turn you into flowers. Or mowers. Or oh, mowers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, mm. that, that was, it was Chaos Gloves this week. We've not had anything else in the gem store. That's it. Yeah, uh, discounted items, some, some discounts. Sales. So like oh, yeah. those those armors we were just talking about, I think were on a small sale. The monk outfit, uh, the home portal stone. So they brought some things back for oh, a discount, back? which I love to see. I love to see them throw put things, even if it's a small discount. You know, I, obviously, I would love to see a big discount because you know, hey, why not? But which um, it's it's good to see things you know on sale and discount, etc. They brought back the black wing combo piece as well, not on sale but for sale. So, for those who might not have it, you could pick that up. Hmm. So I heard that they added in. I don't know if it was in the spring update or afterwards that they added new um, weapon skin drops to the Mystic Forge. Yes. What was that about? Yes. 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 So now is the look. time to buy your great sore skins, boys and girls. Oh my gosh! Because I mean, I I I don't quite know the precise recipe, but um, Inks, you you I think I saw you you'd been playing around with it the other day. So you can actually get a load of the old Halloween skins by dropping junk in the forge. I thought I saved the link, and now I'm not seeing it. QQ, I'm terrible. It was a. It was the Halloween. It started skins? off as. It started yeah, so as... uh, they brought back. There, there's a couple of skins they, that they brought back into the Mystic Forge. This wasn't something that they had published because there's still more work to be done on the Mystic Forge. Uh, I guess bringing more recipes in or uh, adjusting loot tables or something. We don't really know, but um, apparently it worked. I don't know if it works with exotics, but it works with rares at the very least. But you can forge yeah. rares for the Halloween skins, so like the Grinning Shield and the Chainsaw uh, Greatsword, uh, the Great Saw, uh, the different Halloween weapons, as well as the Scarlet Rifles can come out of there as well. Really? Yeah. So like the Scarlet Rainbow and I believe the Scarlet Kiss can both come out Scarlet of there. Kiss. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there was two rifles. Bugger, one was that, the transparent and one was her regular... Kiss yeah, rifle, the, the, whatever it is. the 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 regular one was Scarlet's Kiss, which I bought at the time of the Battle of Lions Arch, and then the second birthday came along, and it's actually the birthday cake gun, which right. I was mm. a little annoyed with, to say the least. And I I don't know for sure, but I would assume that you need to forge like level seventy five or level seventy six plus rares in order to get yeah. these things, just like you would, and you need to get an exotic from the rare, so it's, it's the same sort of drop table is for that. But yeah, Halloween skins, the the Scarlet Guns, I think there's a couple other weapons that they mentioned they're bringing back in there. So yeah, I forged away 90 gold for a shield, and I don't have a shield. But, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's RNG. I know that uh, mm. Foe's got a grinning shield. Brazil has a friend who got a bunch of the Great Souls. So it's just a matter of... I mean, they drop now, at least, for those things. So... You know, if you like one of those and you want to try super mm. duper duper super RNG, <laughs> then you can do so. The, the the other effect that's really good is this has really dropped the price of a lot of those skins down considerably. So if you don't like RNG and you just want to save your gold and want to spend 200, 300 gold or so on a great saw, then, uh, you know, it's a little more obtainable than it was before, which I'm super happy about. Very nice. 
Just mm. throw away that gold. I just want the side it. skin back in. I want the side skin back in. Because mm. I'm still not over that. 20 gold I sold that for. <laughs> and it's now 5 I was going to say, gold. that's one of the top. Once in a while, I'll go and I'll, I'll look at everything on the trading post and look at what are I the mean, most expensive items. And it's just like, sold, oh my god, the, the scythe, scythe is up there. I sold the mini carker. I just... Oh, dude. Just yeah. never sell anything. Hoard anything. everything. But, but, that, but that's the thing. We didn't, we, we didn't think like that back in the day, did we? We didn't think about saving... Saving <laughs> items. Well, I remember it's it's that's just economy. I remember at the start of the game, a commander tag was a hundred gold, and that was so unbelievably unobtainable to my little brain. You know, at level ten, I was like, a hundred gold? Are you insane? Like that's so much. So yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember uh, being in a guild early on. Uh, triple B, where a bunch of us donated, you know, it was a very large guild, and we all donated X amounts so that we could buy one commander tag for somebody <laughs> in the guild to, like, lead us around World vs. World. Uh, because, early, you know, early on, uh, you know, within the first couple of months of the game or whatever, getting 100 gold was a, a much more Tough. difficult than it is today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Hmm. So it's, speaking of World v. World. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we got does... a poll on what mm -hmm. we would like to see Arena focus on next. And it's pretty yeah. interesting. And uh, of course, I've gotten some uh, not so nice feedback because I want a particular feature that isn't necessarily listed there. <laughs> okay, so shoot. Sh should we talk about what what the options are yes. and then yes yes yeah so 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 basically what we've got is this poll says um do you want world v world scoring improvements or world v world quality of life improvements and right. it there's the, there's a little bit of of a list of various bits and pieces you can vote or you can choose no preference and then i i assume they will enact that and there's some there's some there's some some quite interesting stuff. There's a lot of irrelevant stuff. Um, I get the feeling that Inks has some pent up rage about this. So no, I'm yeah. not really. I don't really have pent up rage at all. Um, you know, I I I strongly believe for World vs World players who really care about World vs World that the scoring improvements far outweigh the quality of life improvements. Yeah. And that's not to say that there aren't some very cool or needed things in the quality of life improvement section. But, uh, you know, as of right now, the gap between these two things, you would expect it to be fairly lopsided. lopsided. And it's not that lopsided. Uh, right. Scoring is 49.5%. And quality of life is 44.7%. Oh, so it's way yeah. closer than I think most people anticipated, especially people who I think are invested in World vs. World. They probably are like, why is scoring not like 70%, right? Because right. Uh, like a lot of these scoring things really just make more mm. sense than some of the quality of yeah. life things for them to be focusing on. Although, although to be fair, to be fair to the Minx, Adding a world XP gain sparkle trail. I know, right? I, I, don't I know voted about you. just for that. I don't know that. about you, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, honestly, the, 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 the only thing that I can think of why people are going for the quality of life improvement things is the territory control overlay. That, to me, mm -hmm. that is the only thing of any use. Well, why on earth would you want cross map team chat? Are you kidding? Yeah. Cross cross map team chat is actually one of the more popular big things for quality of life. To be able to talk, I mean, sure. Don't get me wrong. Uh, very very likely you are going to be on team speak with a large group of people when you're in Roars vs World, and so maybe cross map isn't isn't as important there. But for some of the different groups who are in different channels and such, cross map could, is still considered by some people at least to be rather important. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, uh, I, like I, if you're I'm, not on I'm the not team world, speed, world, so 
Yeah. And maybe maybe people will disagree with that, but that's the argument being put forth by people at the very least. Whether you agree or disagree with that, it doesn't really matter. That's why they want cross map chat so much. Yeah. But the thing is, it's um, stuff like add an option for reduced nameplate clutter. That that should be in the options anyway. Right, and so that's why I I was looking at this. First of all, I was so shocked. When, I mean, when someone said, there's a world versus world pull up, I was like, finally, Arena Now. I was like, why didn't you do this earlier? Like, take, you know, an organized bunch of data from world versus world players, see what they want. And then there was two, two questions, two options. And that was it. I was like, wow, really? But I was like, okay, okay, I understand. So then I started looking at it. I was like, quality of life and scoring. I'm like, I don't play World versus World much at all. So I was like, I don't, un I don't understand. Like, everything they listed for scoring, I'm like, I don't really understand what that means. But just scoring in general sounds like something that would improve World versus World for World versus World players so much. I was like, okay, so that is very good. I'm like, that's probably going to win. That's probably what should win. But then I looked at the quality of life stuff and I'm like, okay, for me, and I hated, like, I was so conflicted on this because obviously I would choose quality of life because some of those might bleed over into PVE. So, but I was like, but I want to vote for the scoring because I, I truly want World vs. World to get better. I truly want World vs. World players to get a better experience yeah. out of the game. But stuff like I mean, the reduced nameplate clutter and, and like Ink said, um, the possibility of build templates, stuff like that is quality of life, and and that's the kind of stuff that I think could could bleed over and benefit the entire game, just not templates. just world build versus templates. world. I'm yeah. shocked that See, the, that it's almost fifty fifty. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, again, I I think there's there's some strange things on here, like reduce the impact of night capping. It's like so... yeah, some. Some servers don't have 24-hour rotations, but the Quebec are that play on French servers. Just you're alienating significant portions of a community there by going, well, actually, and here's your, the problem. Tur your turn on the map doesn't count for as much. So we, you have two things going on that I think right now are boosting the quality of life numbers, and I know that some people are not going to like this, but uh, I have said it before, and people didn't like it on Twitter, but build templates. I am going every time that ArenaNet says, "Give us a suggestion." I am always going to say, "Build templates" build until templates. they give me build templates. I want it for World vs. World. I want it for SPVP. I want it for I want it for everything. Mm -hmm. And so maybe they should just work on build templates and separate it from all this other stuff. And then that would make maybe the decision a little easier for me to say yes. Scoring is where mm -hmm. I think my vote should go. But I want build templates. And so that would fall under quality of life and not scoring, unfortunately. So you have a couple of people like me who are saying, I want build templates, quality of life, screw everything else, even though scoring is probably more important in the long run. But then you have another group of people, like Alex was just saying, who are very worried, they're very scared about how you would adjust night capping or rebalance night capping mm -hmm. or how you would deal with night capping because just as Alex said, if you have an Australian community, you have a European community who plays on North American servers, you have a, uh, uh, of course, uh, SEA community that plays on uh, uh, North American the servers, NHS. and yeah. right, and and you have, like you said, Quebec or, or other people who are in North America playing on European servers who play on off hours, and those people are, are some of them are voting quality of life because they're scared on what they would do to maybe mm. alienate them from their night capping yeah, activities. Really. And that, mm. that's a big worry for them. And rather than leave it in ArenaNet's hands, they'll say, well, they can work on it later, work on this first, because I don't want you to screw with me and my activities in World vs. World. Yeah. yeah those so communities say, are wait, larger than you think. They're yeah, just not spread absolutely. out very well. Yeah. So we, we should say what we mean by night capping is so during during your standard daylight day, um, there'll always be people online because you have you have students, you have people on different work patterns where they can drop in for a few hours during relatively normal times of the, of the day and provide your world the world cover. Now, what some servers do, and this is where the French servers, or at least they certainly used to benefit by having the Quebec R on there, is that in the small hours, um, so you know, kind of like midnight to six or seven a.m., 
um, they'd have a secondary contingent that would be able to cover their world v world maps for them. So the, the sneaky Ger- I don't know why I'm saying the sneaky Germans. Blitzkrieg. Anyway, um, so the sneaky Germans could sneak onto their maps during the night and take everything. What? Them sneaky Germans. Them sneaky Germans. Um, but um, so it's kind of um, it's kind of been a bit of a bit of a pain for some servers who don't necessarily have that coverage, um, especially Gandara and uh, Desolation, two the two biggest English speaking servers in uh, on on the EU side of things. Because we don't necessarily have that, um, we don't have that night cover, and it's where we really did suffer during the um, the, the World v World seasons. Even though Gandara, we got gold, so you know that was that was me, that was all me. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, basically, n- night capping is ex- is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's just people going on in the dead of night and taking all the stuff while everybody's in bed. And it can kind of skew the results a little bit. Um, right. The problem, though, is they're saying that uh, what's the exact wording? Reduce the impact of night capping. So, in other words, you know, who knows exactly how they're going to do this? But just a random example would be like, you know, the the points you gain at, at a certain time period would be less than what you gain during prime time, and. Unfortunately, if you play during those night capping hours, that means you're contributing less, even though you're investing the same amount of time. And it just, mm. you know, I can see how that could rub those players the wrong way, how they would not be happy with their efforts counting for less than the efforts of primetime people. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, to, I, I, th- I think that's. It, at, at the very least, it's fairly insulting, isn't it? Saying that if you play on a particular server, your um, your time or your ability isn't worth as much as somebody playing at eight o'clock on a Friday night. It seems See, a bit yeah, daft, but like you said, but like you say, there's no um, clear definition there. Yep, no, your, uh, your prime isn't other people's primes, but. I mean, hey, that, that's kind of the point. Yeah, that's, that's kind the of the point. point that we're making here. That my prime is kind of six p.m. to midnight. Now, if there's, we have Australians, we we have Australians who either have to play on NA or EU um, servers, and um, yeah, essentially uh, Southeast Asian communities as well. If you're there and you've got plus 11 hours for NA or minus 11 hours for the UK, you're pretty screwed whichever way you go because you're going to be playing in the dead of night on those servers. Yep. And if you're playing in the dead of night on those servers and then someone comes along and says, well, actually, that time we think is unfair to the big World v. World guilds who play during prime time, so we're going to reduce the impact that all of your gameplay um, has on the scores... I, I don't necessarily think that's fair. Hmm. Yeah, and we don't really have enough details on exactly how they're going to do it or how it's going to work. We, you know, we've heard little bits and pieces in the past about how they might accomplish this. Um, so, I mean, that that's part of the problem as well. P- because players don't know exactly the solution, they're, you know, they don't want to necessarily vote for it. Um so that's that. And mm. the poll was very vague. It was, I think Eskimo Princess said that they every single one of those little bullet points should have been its own votable thing. And they should have kind well, of seen... It, apparently it will be. Once this initial poll is done, whatever wins, then they'll blow it up into mm. like, hey, out of these five things or six things, whatever it is, which is the most important? And then mm-hmm. that will be another poll. And that's how they're going to decide to work on things. I hope so. Right now. They they really should do that more often. Like anytime that they've had a poll, like I mean, friggin' legend. Like if they wanted to drop something, they should have said, "Would you guys rather we drop legendaries or <laughs> this?" Like 
I don't know. I, I just, I feel like they always say, if, you know, go to the forums if you want to give feedback. Go to the forums, go to the forums. But it's so chaotic and it's so salty. Like, there's a lot of people that don't even go. But if you could just give people a nice, simple poll, you're not getting influenced by anybody else. It's what do you want? Tell us direct to ANET what you want. You know, and they don't even have to promise, you know, we promise that whatever wins, you know, we're, is going to happen. Just get a, it's mm. another way to get a feel for what the community is thinking besides, I, I can't even imagine all, all the stuff they have to read through between the forums mm, and Reddit absolutely. and Twitter. And like, it's just got to be such a jumbled mess. Like, make a, have a weekly poll about something, or a monthly poll about just the state of the game. What are you guys interested in? If you could see one fee one new feature, what would it be? We're not making any promises. We just want to know, you know, put, put build templates on that list and then see it rise to the top. But I just, I think that would be such and a I, good idea. For the record, I totally understand why some people might be annoyed with me suggesting or wanting build templates from this, but you know, we had developer posts and maybe even a post from Mo saying that if you want build templates, structured PvP and World vs. World polls are going to be the first places you're going to be able to ask for these sorts of things. So mm -hmm. if that's the only feedback I can give you or if that's the only way I can let you know or to really express how badly I want build templates, then that's, that's how you have told me to express it. So that's how I'm going to do so. And and that's going to uh, build templates only. That's all. Yes, nothing else. Screw everything else. No, <laughs> obviously not. But um, I, I really wish they had a separate team or a separate group working on build templates for everybody, for everything, and not necessarily, you know, not necessarily an impact on these polls. But this is how they said they want us to suggest it. So mm. there you go. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Sorry for the typing. So loud. Sorry for the. <laughs> sorry for the typing. Alex, rage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to end the show there, but we're going to continue and talk to you guys on the post show. So if you're watching live on Twitch, stay right where you are. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching and scroll down into the description and follow us on all the places for more Guild Wars 2 content. And join us live on Twitch. Next week, we're actually going to be moving to Saturday because of Foostival. Foostival is next Woo! Saturday. And I don't know the exact time yet. It's going to be around the same time. It might be a little bit earlier, but I'll let you guys know as soon as I know an exact time that we will be starting. And it'll be right here. Same channel, but Alex and Corvus will be joining us from Foostival live. Live. So yeah. That'll be so sweet. If, 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 if you'd like any body parts signing, come down to Foostival. <laughs> We're not picky. Okay. <laughs> I want you to sign my here elbow first, right here. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week, guys. Take care. Enjoy the game. Bye. Okay, bye. -bye. bye.